Um, I'm not sure how it works in baseball, and I'm a more of a football person and um, soccer, if that's what you're familiar with. I don't know how player transfers do work in the baseball. You know, in football, you have to sign players, you know, discuss, mm-hmm. negotiate, salaries and all, all that stuff. I think in um, uh, I think in American football, you have to, it's like, you know, at the end of the season, you know, players get drafted and all of that. So um, having, you know, being very, a very Bitcoin-centric organization, have you had problems trying to, you know, negotiate, you know, with trying to get new talent into your team and, you know, having to have this conversation, does it get awkward? Does it get weird? You know, say, hey, we're not going to pay the regular fiat. They used to, you know, fuck that. We're giving you freedom, Bitcoin. And how does the conversation, you know, usually go? Has that been an issue when trying to get a new talent on board? No, it's been the, the exact opposite, actually. So we, we've got a, a strong relationship with the Tampa Bay Rays who are in the MLB, um, and they send us over their best prospects each Australian summer. So I was up in Florida at the start of February and I was up at the train, uh, spring training facility. Um, and some of the boys that had played for us in previous uh, years sprinted towards me and were like, Steve, why didn't you do this two years ago? Why didn't you take the Bitcoin standard back in uh, 2020 when we were there? We would have loved to have been part of this journey with your organisation. Um, and that's just one example of, of many where you know, we've had people uh, you know, reach out to us and um, you know, want to be part of something different, want to be part of something special, want to be part of um, an, an organisation which is making change for the better um, across the world. So, um, yeah, the inquiries that we get from players worldwide, uh, we haven't had any negative feedback in regards to... Um, you know, our, our, our position moving forward with Bitcoin. Um, but again, yeah, you know, it's a discussion which, you know, it, it, if, if required, we'll talk them through it. And, and I'm sure by the end of that conversation, they'll, they'll understand there won't be any, uh, any problem moving forward. But uh, no, the, uh, in, in terms of recruitment, we've just signed a World Series champion by the name of Josh Reddick um, and really looking forward to seeing him arrive in Perth, uh, you know, in, in October. So it uh, certainly hasn't, uh, hasn't slowed us down at all. Uh, yeah, I like Jerry. I mean, I'm, I'm big into lots of sports, but I think baseball's one of the only ones I really don't know anything about. But hey, Perth Heat's already my team, boys. So you've already uh, you've already persuaded me to, <laughs> <laughs> to be a fan. Um, yeah, yeah, just oh. it, it, it's a pretty cool sport to watch uh, live. If, if, if look up, I had not watched a baseball game from start to finish before I took the uh, before I took the role as chief executive. Um, yeah, watched a couple of games on TV and um, admittedly falling asleep at different stages of the game. But you come out to the ballpark and it's more about a day coming out with friends or mates and you know, working your way through the menu, having a couple of beers and, and drifting in and out of a game. Uh, it's not like, I say, a football game when you're in, you know, engrossed in it for 90 minutes and uh, you know every kick, every tackle means something. Um, yeah, the pace of the baseball game is, 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 is pretty chilled um, and, it, and it's a great way just to uh, watch sport without um, all the distractions going on around it. So... Um, yeah, it's if you if you're going to watch a baseball game, try to get to a ballpark and watch it live, um, as opposed to uh, maybe on the, on the box initially. Unlike Jerry and Lawrence, I've been a baseball fan for most of my life. Uh, oh, here we I'm go. I'm actually pretty ignorant that uh, baseball was so popular in Australia. Um, how how many different teams are there in Australia? Well, it's an international competition, the Australian Baseball League. There's eight teams in it. Uh, there's one from Korea. There's one from New Zealand. And there's six from Australia. Um, it's one of the best winter leagues in the world. So as I said, we've you know, got the association with the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, 32 years of Perth Heat has been an organisation. We've had 30 players go on to play Major League Baseball. Um, so we, it's effectively one per year from our organisation making it through uh, to the big leagues. Um, I don't know any other team in world sport that, pres- uh, that has such a, a strong uh, pathway into, the, uh, into their best you know, competition in the world so and um, we're really really proud of the fact that uh, we're good at producing baseballers we're brilliant at winning championships and now we're setting the uh, the standard in terms of operating on a bitcoin standard but uh yeah um graham lloyd who played for us uh, uh the perth heat won uh, world series with the new york yankees in 96 and 98 liam hendricks uh currently with the chicago white Sox. uh MLB reliever of the year, the last two years, ex Perth Heat. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a really good uh, spread of Perth Heat players throughout Major League Baseball. Um, and, and, and the competitions are a really high standard. I grew up in, in, the, in the US and I, I was a Giants fan for most of my life, a San Francisco Giants fan. Um, I lived in Sacramento. They have the, the River Cats, which is like a minor league team. Uh, does players go to the MLB and turn pro? 
Yeah, absolutely. So we just had uh, BJ Cook, who was signed by the uh, Oakland A's, um, and yeah, he'll he'll start uh, working his way up through through the minor leagues. Uh, we've got a couple of other players at, uh, at various teams uh, throughout uh, the you know, the minor leagues as well. So there's uh, Josh Hendrickson, there's Alex Hall, there's Auric Biaski. There's actually a really cool story with Alex Hall uh, two weeks ago, where you now he got promoted from the uh, the minor leagues from High A and. Uh, made it all the way to the majors. Had a couple of COVID uh, issues with their catchers, and uh, you know, suddenly he was propelled from uh, from high A into the major leagues, which was very very cool. Um, and it, it was nice because he's had, I, I guess, a, a tough start to the season um, with our season being shut down last year. The boys uh, never never got uh, the exposure of the A bill that they needed to get themselves uh, ready for the start of uh, spring training in the US. So uh, yeah, for him to go through and have that experience was awesome. So yeah, we got players scattered throughout the minor leagues, yeah, working their way up. Uh, back into, yeah, uh, to try and get uh, the opportunity to play Major League. So, yeah, we think probably by the end of the year, um, it's 30 players, that record at the moment. They could probably push maybe 32 or 33. There's there's two or three knocking on the door at the moment, which is uh, which is pretty cool. I guess dial back the conversation a little bit. When it comes to you guys, and you said obviously talking about Bitcoin and things like that, like Patrick, were you uh, involved in the organisation in another capacity before you became CBO or were you guys friends or how, how did you guys... How did that all happen? Like, uh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, no, no, not involved at all, um, really. Uh, and the idea was just as soon as as soon as we uh, the possibility came up that this was going to be a thing, and you start to have those initial conversations with the the the, the people that are involved um, in deciding whether or not this is going to be a reality. Um, you you quickly realize just how much work there is out there, um, and the infrastructure and all of the services around Bitcoin um, has come a, a you know an extremely long way. Uh, in the past couple of years and things have gotten significantly easier, but it is still a field where things are changing weekly. You know, the, the way that we are going to do things uh, now is different than the way that we're going to do things 30 days from now and 90 days from now. Uh, and it became clear that someone just needed to be on top of that to be able to filter back the information that was going to really move the needle, what we needed to change, what we needed to look at, uh, communication with some of, the, um, some of the key companies that we were going to use to be able to pull this off. Uh, because it became apparent that really uh, eventually that we would never have just a complete package ready to go, right? We're the first ones to do it. Uh, we were happy to stumble along and go through that process and then report back to the community. But uh, we, we were never going to get that this uh, this service or this uh, particular company or these things don't just tick all the boxes. We were going to have to come up with a Frankenstein version of it. Um, and really the role of CBO that was sort of crafted out of that was initially in education and setting up the systems that were going to allow these things to make it happen because there are, you know, it's it's easy to sit here and talk about it now um, after the work that we put in to actually make this a reality. Uh, but behind the scenes, uh, there's a tremendous amount of things that are just not, you know, in reality, just not ready for prime time. It's not like a plug and play solution for every company can do this. Every small business can do this. Uh, you know, we don't have an, an army of uh, lawyers and accountants at the, the company that can just full time stop what they're doing and sort of get to work on this. And uh, the solutions just aren't there, right? The tax regulations are horrendous still. Um, they're really backwards. Uh, the payment of players and exactly how that was going to happen and how it was going to be facilitated and uh, where were the wallets going to come from and who was going to tell the players about these wallets and how were they going to learn about these things and uh, with staff and then with payments and then with just custodial, like how are we going to actually hold on the balance sheet? How are you going to hold the Bitcoin? Uh, what is the key setup going to be? What is the uh, security going to be around that? Who's going to have access to those things? Just tons and tons and tons of questions <laughs> where you start with like, oh yeah, this is going to be a great idea. And then you quickly realize that um, there's a, a number of boxes to check and it just naturally worked out that I could gravitate and fill that role um, and switch from sort of educating and orange pilling to maybe being the one on the front line to, to sort of help lead this thing and, uh, and just communicate with all of the different people that we are now in constant communication with to try and make this thing as good as possible because we realize, which is something that the, the board was really interested in, um, is to take advantage of the fact that we are really a, a test pilot case. And there's a lot of eyeballs on us outside the organization, but also from within it. You know, the owners um, have businesses uh, ranging in a wide variety of things with lots and lots of capital um, that th they're interested in to see, well, how, how is this going to work? How is this going to be accepted? How is it, how can I use this, not just for the organization, but outside of it, in our other businesses? Is this something that is really on the front foot? Like, how is the media going to perceive these things? Um, and that was 100% a strategy on, on our part, knowing that if you're stepping into the business now, if you're stepping into the Bitcoin space now as a company, uh, you really just can't step in and, and not participate. You really, you, you, you have to, almost by default, because of the questions in the media that you will receive, 
you have to have a forward-facing education component of the business. And it really, it's almost branched off into two separate businesses. You know, Steve and I are on so many of these Zoom calls with different organizations that have questions. How, how did you do this? How did you deal with X, Y, and Z? Um, so that, that has sort of morphed in the role now that everything is at least, you know, the wheels are on the wagon and it's moving forward um, in, in some capacity um, that now the role has sort of shifted into, well, uh, how can we be advantageous or how can we show other people and use the experience that we have to leverage other companies getting into the space and uh, to, you know, to report back to the companies that are helping us make it all possible. Because I, I know, and BitRefill is not, not one, but I know companies in the crypto space, so like crypto or Bitcoin companies, that don't, don't don't or can't pay most of their employees in, in crypto or Bitcoin. So it's a tough thing to do even for companies literally in the space. Um, so I was thinking things like, well, you know, you make you decide to make this change, but then you've got accounting software, right? Say you're using accounting software, like suddenly <laughs> that may not be completely compatible. Like say you use zero or whatever, like there's suddenly workarounds you've got to do with, with that, right? Just to be able to go, okay, we bring the money in here, let me pay that. And then I was thinking, you know, it sounds to me like you guys hold, yeah, mainly Bitcoin. Obviously, you have some fiat for when you accept fiat and, and things like that, um, which seems practical. Um, but also, I was thinking if you're trying to go 100% Bitcoin on the balance sheet, then you're going to have to do coin payments, I guess, but like a reverse version where you automatically sell to Bitcoin. And it's, it's like, there's so many. And then obviously, when you do that, there's the tax of when you've done that event. And, you know, you, you see, you get taxed on the Bitcoin as income, and then you get taxed potentially on it with capital gains. If it then is worth a different value at the end of the year. So there's all these different things you have to worry about. Um, so yeah, I can see, uh, yeah, man, you got, a, you got a job cut out for you. That's for sure. <laughs> your, your, you just sounded like my brain for the last uh, 12 months. Like you start to, you, you, you figure out one thing and then you're like, oh no, this is going to be way worse because I have to do these other 10 things. <laughs> but you know, the, the thing that we kept coming back to was that if it's not us doing this, someone else has to do it. So it's like, this is what we can do. This is the position that we are able to be in. Um, and this is how the needle gets moved. And like I said, everybody can bring their own skills um, to Bitcoin. Um, and we just so happen to be the ones in this position. And it's like, well, uh, let's try. <laughs> let's try and do the work. And let's try and have those conversations with the people like Zero, because those changes aren't going to happen um, unless, you know, unless you be the squeaky wheel, unless you say, uh, we want this change. Like, just uh, uh, imagine you know, just, just the, just the, the merchandise that we have or the, the different vendors that we have, those, that's now every conversation is, begins with Bitcoin of, uh, you know, there's an issue uh, either through acceptance or through payments or through, um, you know, some websites can't process it at all for tickets for the actual game. So now you have to go through and, and deal with the companies that are doing our payments versus the companies that uh, the tickets are actually on. It just turns into this whole thing. But you know, that's what we signed up for and, and, and happy to do it in the hopes that uh, this will be a, like I said, a positive reflection on what is possible. And it shows the demand is not there just from the individuals. It's not there just from the large corporations like your uh, Teslas or your micro strategies. But this can actually be workable in a solution in, in a system that is far smaller and, and the benefits can be uh, put on display. Um, and, and that's the whole goal, really. Sorry, so I was thinking as, you know, Lawrence was saying a bunch of things I was before the interview started, I was like, what does the Bitcoin chief Bitcoin officer actually do? So I was thinking, like, what's your day-to-day -day routine? And and listen to Lauren say a bunch of things like, wow, like there is so you know, whole, you know, shitload of stuff to actually do. So it got it got me thinking that has your job gotten easier over time, or has it gotten you know more and more complicated and you know demanding in several ways? And do you feel like it'll get I I I'm I'm sure you're thinking maybe one day, you know, you just sit back and relax and think, you know, everything's going so smoothly, you know, accounting is well taken care of and, you know, Bitcoin is accepted everywhere. And now you don't have to think about, you know, too much, you know, you know, shit. So does it get easier, you know, as, as, you know, in your experience? I am, I am desperately hoping that that day comes, right? And if the, if the game theory plays off and all of the models work the, in, in our heads, then yes, it will get easier. Um, but to say that now would be a lie. Uh, it certainly gets, it gets more complicated because like you say, one solution that you have for a certain problem will just lead on to other things. But really the, the, ma the, the majority of the work still is deciding and being the filtration for uh, how much technical information is passed on to the team that they need to know for you know what solution X is going to do to problem Y. 
you know, just sort of connecting the dots in, inside of the organization to say, uh, maybe we don't need to move on this now because that problem will, uh, you know, open us up to another whole can of worms that we can't. So it really, it's like a filtration process to determine just how technical we're going to get with people that, that may not need to understand the, the, the nuts and bolts of, of the network and just how it operates versus what, what, what it means to the business itself. So it really is that you know, I'm sort of like a translator um, at the moment, but also, uh, you know, doing that with not only the companies that are trying to help us out and the solutions that we're trying to get and some of the bespoke things that we are doing just in-house, um, but then even in the organization, you know, there's constant questions, there's, there's people get interested and uh, around the water cooler, there's people that ask questions and, and you know, there goes an hour orange pilling, uh, you know, somebody at the, the water cooler because they're talking to their uncle and they, they, you know, they're having issues with volatility or they're having issues with their wallets or payment hasn't gone through or they think, you know, they've sent funds somewhere that shouldn't have gone. It's just, uh, you know, it's constant, it's constant education and it's constant work and, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, really fun to be a part of, uh, even though there's lots and lots to be done. What about like uh, the Bitcoin companies? Have they reached out to you guys to like be sponsors, put their logo in the stadium, uh, sponsor the seventh inning stretch or things like that? Have you guys had a good response from companies in the Bitcoin industry? Uh, yeah, the, the, the response from the community has been amazing. Uh, I think the response from Bitcoin companies uh, has been, you know, we, we have been well received um, in the space. Uh, but it would be uh, sort of without giving away too many details about future announcements that are coming up and, and what's being worked on behind the scenes. Uh, there's a lot happening in, in that space, uh, but really we are trying to, like I mentioned, and this is something that we just re keep repeating inside of the organization to remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to play the long game, right? The, the, the Perth Heat, the organization as a baseball team, has got 32 years of proof of work inside of the community trying to do what is right. Uh, and the last thing that we want to do is come out and um, endorse products or endorse services that we are, number one, not using ourselves uh, because we want to be a place that you can send grandma to the ball game and she's not going to go home with some shit coin, um, you know, that's going to scam out and then she's going to get rug pulled on, which is, it's, it's, you know, it is, it's, it's quite funny to think about that, but that's what it's, we're trying to avoid that at all costs. Um, and we're trying to partner up with people that understand that. So it is, uh, you know, it is a, it's a fine line to number one, figure out how can we best, because for a lot of people, this is going to be their first interaction with Bitcoin that is outside of a uh, newspaper article or a magazine or a hit piece that they've seen on legacy media about Bitcoin mining being bad for the environment, right? We want to change the very first, the, the first narrative touch point to something positive, to something easy. Uh, our job is sort of to find what, how can we get people into the ecosystem um, on, a, on a positive note, like on a positive step? And how can we get those easy wins, which is, you know, stuff that we're doing on the ballpark or stuff that we're doing on the website or some of the media that Steve and I do. How can we show people that, number one, this isn't scary. This is not, you know, the narratives have changed from 2017. Uh, you know, things have moved a long, long way from that. But it requires uh, teaming up with the right people. And, of course, there was a lot of interest, especially early on at the start, um, from uh, a couple of large companies you can imagine. Um, the, the names of those companies that have, that have lots and lots of money and deep pockets, uh, it, the, I think the Bitcoin only companies and some of the Bitcoin centric companies, they, they just may be smaller in size um, than those companies. And it, and it makes sense because they're not able to generate the revenue that happens uh, from some of the, you know, some of the, uh, let's say, non Bitcoin uh, items that are there for exchanges and things like that. So it, it's about it, we're, we're trying to stay um, in a very specific lane to show what can be done and how Bitcoin can be good for an organization like our own. So uh, for, for partnerships and sponsorships, obviously we are looking for support from the community. We would love to have uh, every sponsor be Bitcoin focused and Bitcoin oriented. And it's about raising those hands because we think this is an opportunity, right? This is not an opportunity to sponsor a Australian baseball team. This is the Bitcoin baseball team now, right? This is a on a global scale uh, where this story will be uh, will be told around the world, right? We, we want to be much like uh, El Zante. The Bitcoin, Bitcoin beach has become a destination for Bitcoiners. Right. Well, that's exactly what we're doing at the ballpark. We are doing all in on Bitcoin, everything Bitcoin. All the companies should come. If you have if you want to experiment in Bitcoin and you're a company, uh, talk to us, because every weekend at the ballpark, we have not only educated people that are willing to reach out to first timers that, that come to the ballpark, uh, but you can have face to face interaction with people that have never heard of Bitcoin. And they're going to get put down a certain path based on how we discuss it with them, based on how we intro with them and your products. So we're Obviously, we're looking for companies that want access to something like that and that can see the value in the news story that's going to happen in the local media, in the national media, in the international media, outside of the Bitcoin community, inside of the Bitcoin community. It's about, you know, taking taking the narrative outside of Bitcoin Twitter uh, and introducing it to people through the Trojan horse of, hey, I, I really like baseball. <laughs> 
oh, you really like baseball. Okay, well, uh, also, you know, Bitcoin is going to change the world. There you go. Like, congratulations. You are now orange pilled. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're certainly still looking for uh, some of those Bitcoin companies to, to sort of raise their hand and, and recognize the opportunity that we think that we are sort of just on the precipice of. Thank mm -hmm. you.